celebrity poker, everything I loved about dinner for five, take out the things I didn't like and mix it up with board gaming to show the world that gamers are not antisocial weirdos who can't make eye contact when they talk, when they talk to you. That gamers are not only men. That, 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 that gamers are, are not ultra competitive. That it is this wonderful social activity that, uh, that we all love, that we love to get together doing it and sort of show by example that it is awesome. And uh, we shot 20 episodes, I think four or five of them have aired already, and they come out every other week. So the big question is, will I ever win on my own goddamn show? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and the answer is, spoilers, sweetie. <laughs> to a tabletop sponsored event to add something like Prime or... You know, yes, we have talked extensively about doing a tabletop, uh, a traveling tabletop show. And actually, Boyan, will you stand up? This is my friend Boyan, everybody. Boyan is a game designer, and Boyan is, a, uh, Boyan is an associate producer on tabletop, and is one of the very big reasons that the show exists, and one of the huge reasons that the show works and is awesome. Um, and, you know, I walked into, I wrote a comic book, I wrote a Fox comic for the Guild, Fox Guild. And it looks just like that. Um, and, and, and also like that. Wait, it doesn't look like that, that looks like the program. Why do you have to turn this building into a room full of flies? Oh, you're redeemed. They're good, it looks like that. All right, we know, all right, we all have derringers, okay, we know. So, uh, uh, I was a, um, uh, I went to the comic book shop. And I'm on Wednesday just to go get my books. And I'm walking through the aisles, and like, there's the comic book I wrote. It's on the shelf. And I was like, I made that. <laughs> but it wasn't just me. It was me, and Felicia, and Jamie McKelvey, and Scott Alley, and Emma Rios did a cover, and Paul Duffield did a cover. And, and it was this wonderful creative uh, collaboration. And it was really amazing that a bunch of people came together to make an awesome thing. And that's what Tabletop is. A bunch of people come together to make an awesome thing. We loved it. We had an incredibly good time doing it. And we believe that there is absolutely uh, um, a place for the tabletop room. I mean, look, I mean, there's already original wireless gaming at, at cons, right? But the idea of like putting up like a tabletop table um, and like maybe child's play auctioning seats to come and play games uh, or, or th things like that. I mean, I think that could be a thing where like we could do something really super cool. I'm going to Origins next week. And uh, when they asked me if I would go, I said, listen, I'll come to Origins, but like, I want to play games. And they said, all right, we'll put you in the gaming room and people can come play games with you. How about that? And I was like, and what else? They're like, no, that's it. Just come play games and have a good time and talk about your show. And I was like, oh, I guess. <laughs> um, so, so it may, something like that may have happened, may, ha may end up happening. There. And you look as though you have follow-up questions, sir. I'm just going to say, if you put it up at the uh, charity dinner, yeah. I'm buying it. Okay. <laughs> That's actually a really good idea. We will put it up at the dinner. Well, I'll, I'll talk to All right. I'll talk to Koo. Okay. Um, uh, yes, ma'am. Um, two things. What was your favorite episode of Tabletop? What was my favorite episode of Tabletop? And? Probably Fiasco. And? Yeah. Is Anne my favorite episode of Tabletop? <laughs> I have to tell you, it was really awesome that I tricked my wife into coming to play on the show. <laughs> a friend of mine was supposed to, was supposed to be on, on the show, and, and he's a producer on, a, on his own show, and he had to leave. Uh, he couldn't do it. He was like, I'm so sorry, you know, we gotta go on location. And uh, I called her and I said, would you, would you want to come play Ticket to Ride? Because it's a game that she plays. And I was like, um, and I went to Felicia, she's not going to do that. She goes, yeah, that'd be great. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it was 
awesome. You know what I actually really love about that episode of Tabletop is that um, if you watch that, like, I think it's I think you can watch that and see why I am so madly in love with her, and and why we have such a wonderful partnership, and and why we are such incredibly close friends on top of everything else. There is this moment for those of you who haven't seen it. We play Ticket to Ride. It's a game with like 200 little tiny classic trains. And at the very end of the game, uh, we're counting up the trains to see who, uh, who won the game. Because like, I just want to be sure, right? So Boyan comes out, Boyan's like looking at the board, and we're like counting up the trains just to make sure, like we're pretty sure Colin has longest room. And Colin Ferguson played on that show too, by the way. Ladies. Uh, <laughs> Woo! We're counting the trains, we're counting up the trains. And, uh, and, and, it, and Anne is telling a story to Colin. At the end of the story, she goes, and that! And this the thing. And the table goes, Funk. <laughs> And the trains go, explode <laughs> And we all at the table go, <laughs> You can find the gifs on YouTube. Like, like, bam, and the table goes in slow motion, and I go, <laughs> And I just go, I sit up and I go, what did you do? Because we didn't have time, because the production schedule was so tight, to do more. Because it was like, well, I guess we're going to put all those trains back on and hope there was a camera rolling. And anyway, so that was really, really fun. And the way that we both reacted to that is just sort of like, that's our relationship. <laughs> uh, but the Fiasco episode, I think, is my favorite. Because Fiasco is one of my favorite games ever. And I played with Bonnie Burden and John Rogers and Allison Hayslip. And we tell an unbelievable story. And um, well, I, you know what? I'm the executive producer of the show. I can go ahead and break news right here at the Phoenix Comic Con. Will <laughs> Mike March, Jason Morningstar, and I wrote a playset for Fiasco for that episode. <laughs> um, that we will release when the episode is released. So it'll be a free thing that you can get and play yourself. It's looking like I'm nearly ending my time. Excuse me, just a minute, I have to look at my mic. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, just put it back in my pocket. Uh, you, sir, you thought you were getting called on, and then you didn't get called on, so now you're getting called on. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't actually have a question. That's the end of you. Who had a question? <laughs> Oh my god, will I ever play a villain on Doctor Who? Please. Allow me to answer your question with a question. If someone came to you and said, would you like $11 billion just cause? No, no, there's really no catch. How long would you not have to think about it? I would do anything to be on Doctor Who. Anything at anything at all. Pull some cables around in the background. I, I am there. I absolutely, I absolutely love it, and uh, it's it's such a wonderful show. And um, I wasn't as crazy about the last season as I was seasons beforehand. There's a lot about it that I liked, but um, I kind of thought that it turned into the Book of Revelations, and and it became very like. We were, we were driving toward one thing all season long, which is cool, but it was I was like, okay, but why don't you go to crazy weird planets and go meet weird things and like go all over the place like, you know, Doctor Who does. Um, and I love them all. They're amazing actors. They're just great. Um, so I'm very, very hopeful that that, that show, the, you know, the, that, uh, that was in Matt Smith's first season, um, that we'll get to see more of that. And also, I love you. Yeah. No, I don't mean like I like her, like she's good in the show, I mean like I love her. I want to get on her. I want to be friends with her. Don't give me that look. You know she's on my list. Look, if Nathan Fillion would be on your list. Which is weird, because it's the one place where our lists overlap. <laughs> I'll tell you one more thing before, before I leave, because we all have stuff to do tonight. Um, at Comic-Con last year, uh, I finally, Nathan and I, we have so many friends in common, 
and we were never in the same place ever. So Nathan and I finally meet each other, and uh, Anne had left early to go home. Uh, to go home. Aww. Aww. A very close family friend who, who we love like one of our own children was getting married. And Anne went to represent Team Wheaton, which was a really noble and wonderful thing to do, and stupid. <laughs> and Ryan and I went out, and we went out dancing. They've been filming this <laughs> until 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and it was as awesome as you think it was. So I told Anne about it. Anne knows that I love Karen Gillen. Anne texts me in a picture of her with Karen Gillen. No. Because she doesn't have a single fuck to give about Dr. It's just not her thing. You know? She doesn't like her. It doesn't matter to her. But she knows that I want to put Karen Gillan in my pocket and where I go for the rest of my life. And uh, so she sent me that picture. So a couple of weeks later, <clears throat> so I tell her the next day, oh, by the way, I'm sending me pictures. Um, I danced with Nathan Fillion all night last night and it was spectacular. <laughs> His hands are like baby claws. <laughs> He's so gentle, and he knows when to let you leave. When you put his head on, when you put your head on his chest, it's like you could just live there. A couple of months after that, Hardwick calls me and he asks me if I'll come do the Nerdist Holiday Special thing. And I was like, dude, I love you, I'll do anything for you. And uh, I said, yeah, I'd love to do that. So I went to do the Nerdist Holiday Special, and I got there, and Nathan Fillion was on the show. <laughs> I did not know that Nathan was going to be there. So I said to Nathan, dude, you're on my wife's list. <laughs> and I said, pretend this is the first time you've heard this from somebody. <laughs> I tell him the story about me and sending me the picture of Karen Gillen. And I said, uh, so, um, would you take a picture with me that I can send to my wife, who is not here, of us together? And he was like, that would be awesome. So, so he did. And I sent it to Anne. I'm like, this is how much time elapsed, okay? So, you know, like you go, oh, I have a text message, right? <laughs> <laughs> now I will re Now I will reply. Fuck you. <laughs>